Hey boys, welcome back to some more NRL Supercoach. It's going to be the round 27 preview, the final round of the season. It's all come down to this, you know, it's been a it's been a it's been a rough year. It's been a very rough year for me and and I honestly I feel like it's been a rough year for a lot of people that have like done Supercoach a lot. Um there's definitely people that are that are going well and, and a lot better than me, but I I don't know, it just feels like it's just been one of those years for for a lot of people um, that are that are fairly well versed in uh, in super coach. Things just haven't quite gone to plan. We've definitely made some mistakes along the way, but um, but yeah, we can you know I'll probably do like an end of season type of wrap up video discussing uh, some some more of those tidbits. But uh, the team list dropped today, and oh my, dude, this just sums up super coach this year. Probably the worst team list I could have ever hoped for um, in the final round of the season. Like, I honestly, honestly, I can't believe the team list. For one, pretty much every team is full strength. Like, there's there's a few people out, sure. But the only, like, the only people that are fucking out seem to be my, like, pods and also like a lot of the like just no one's been rested like i'm i am praying for some for some late carnage man because i can't oh my god it's like again like i, I go back to like like i've been I, i've been talking about it for a few weeks that i wasn't really expecting that many restings but I was hoping for a few more, man. Like, come on. Um, we'll go through the team list. So obviously, uh, dummy hearts are fine. Pain hearts is out, which I like. I. <laughs> oh man, you just super coach. You just have to kick me when I'm down, don't you? I, I, it just can never be. Oh, you can never give me a uh, a couple of weeks of, of good fortune. So, Payne Haas, he did get me 80 in a week. I wasn't expecting him back at all this season. So, I guess we'll take the 80 points from big Payne Haas. I'm not going to lie. I, was ex I did have a feeling he wasn't going to play this game. Like, he played massive minutes last week. He definitely... His second stint, especially, he was he was definitely hobbling around. He wasn't running the ball very much. I was, I was not... Um, optimistic, but the fact that like Wilson, Piacora, uh, Stags all being out, I thought, oh, maybe they just play Payne Haas, but no. To my chagrin, they have not played uh, Payne Haas, so there is one gone from the books. Um, it does, I mean, the silver lining is that it does make the sit starts easier, and now I can, I can very easily play Semiella Finu in the starting side, because it would have been a very tough choice. I would have liked to have played Finu against the the Eels. Uh, he's been, I mean, he's been a bit rocks or diamonds Finu, but he is a he is an upside eighty minute back rower. So it does make that decision easy. The tough one now, again, like just like Penrith, <laughs> Penrith not resting like any players. Like they're they're as full strength as they could possibly be. I was really hoping that Henry would like. I thought they might rest like Leota or Fisher Harris or a couple of them, but not to be at the moment. Um, we'll see if there's any late restings for Penrith. I wouldn't be shocked, um, but it's I don't know. They they did name them all, so yeah, who knows? It would have been nice to play Henry if he was starting, but I think I think as it stands, thankfully, so Penrith play. Yeah, so they play just after the doggy, so we'll know we will know what's going on with Penrith's side. So if if they do end up resting a couple of the middle forwards, then I'm I'd be very happy to play Liam Henry over Curran. Obviously Curran taking on the Cowboys carrying a bit of an AC issue still. He's going to be, I mean, he's going to be managing that through the final series, so that they're not going to want to burn him out in the final round of the season, so I'd probably, I'd rather play Henry if he's if he's going to play a few more minutes, but it's, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a flip of the coin between those two. We'll see what happens. Uh, the back row, so the one, the one good out is Fafita, right? I was very happy to see Fafita was out because, I mean, again, he's, he's a player that, 
everybody owns or like majority of super coaches own at this end of the st- uh, stage of the season and i i mean I, I honestly didn't want to play in this week anyway so it, it sort of works out pretty well we don't have to play for feeder now he's a he's an easy out we don't have to worry about him so i mean ellie katoa is back so obviously he'll slot straight back in again like i mean I wasn't expecting Nikora to really get a rest. El- uh, Elikawa to also not expecting a rest. Angus Crichton, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I was fucking hoping that Crichton would get a rest because, like, again, everybody owns Angus Crichton and I've got the fucking cover. Like, <laughs> come on, man. You- I-, I guess I-, I guess it was probably less likely with... Uh, with all the Roosters players out injured last week, but I don't know, isn't it, isn't it like more reason now to like give someone like a Crichton or even a Tedesco a rest? The fact that they lost, they lost Smith, Walker, and Radley, isn't it more reason to like give a couple of the other big guns a rest in the fucking final round of the season? But I don't know. He's playing, he's playing at the moment, so obviously we will play Crichton if he plays. So the back row is sorted there. Halfbacks, obviously, Sammy Walker is out. So, I mean, we'll slot Dylan Brown straight in for now. I, I was happy to play Brown regardless. I mean, I I can bank on him not getting fucking 150 points again. But if he can, if he can just do well this week, I, it would be nice for me. I, it would be nice. Uh, Dane Laurie also not back. As I said, Penrith with basically a full strength side, which is. You love to see it. You fucking love to see it. Um, <laughs> it was the one. Lo- and, okay, so I am still holding out hope that Laurie comes in late for Edwards. Like, I just... Surely, you're taking on the Gold Coast Titans. Like, they probably... Uh, I don't know. Like, they probably have to... I think they have to... They don't have to win this game to secure top two. I think if... I think if they lose and Roosters win, I think the Roosters will overtake them. I think. I'm pretty sure that's the latter, right? Um... So, I don't know, but still, like, Ed, like Edwards has not been fully fit for a while. Like, why why would you not play Edward Laurie, dude? Like, I I feel like Laurie's going to come in late. Um, I, We'll see, we'll see. I mean, at the again, the one silver lining is that I, it, it makes the sit starts easier because I'm pretty, like, I'm pretty happy to play Galvin against the Eels. <laughs> as much as I'm happy to play Brown against the Tigers, I'm pretty happy to play Galvin against the Eels as well. So we'll just start uh, Galvin. But again, like, it is annoying. Like, Laurie was my one big pod. And God, what could, I, I mean, Laurie's just one of those guys, what could have been, you know, if he didn't cop that head knock early on. I know I've whinged about it enough, but, uh, but okay, we'll go, we'll go forward. Um, so the center wing, so yeah, no one is rested here as expected. Like I wasn't expecting Holmes, Eero, Kiraz. I, th- I thought maybe Kiraz gets a rest. But it's, again, like, looking at the fixtures, it's a big game. I mean, Bulldogs, Cowboys are, like, competing. Um, I don't know if they're necessarily competing for the spot, the same spot, but obviously it's a big game leading into finals. I wasn't really expecting it. Garrick obviously playing. Dom Young also playing. And Joey Manu is back to the centers. Thank God. I did see a few people talk about Joey Manu should be playing 5-8. I'm just like, what are you fucking... Did you not watch last week? Did you, did you not watch last week with Manu in the 5-8 spot? So Sandra Smith at halfback. I obviously like Dom Young outside of Joey Manu. Um, I think he... Yeah, I think he's definitely a play against the Bunnies. for sh- I mean, you have to. You have to. He's got the highest upside out of most center wingers. Greg Marju, he's probably gone. He's probably gone as a trade. And then Tedesco obviously playing. And then Tommy Trebojevic is out. So, I mean, simply put, we can do one trade very, very simply. And that's Caelan Ponga. I mean, there's, there's no one else to bring in. I mean, we'll have a look. But it's Ponga every day of the week, in my opinion. Um, 
because you've got so yeah i mean ponga god tommy got up to a million buckaroos that's pretty funny i mean pong has been killing it he's only at 800k tommy is gonna <laughs> jaboy which is gonna start out very expensive next year um so yeah ponga is the obvious choice you got scotty drinkwater no gutherson i mean they are taking on the tigers but again like i mean pong is up against the dolphins which i think is going to be a tough like it's 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 a do or die game for both those clubs so it's not it's not necessarily like a slam dunk but i mean ponga is just their attack if they're going to win is through ponga he's got the goal kicking which is just such a huge bonus so i just i still prefer ponga um edwards i mean he hasn't looked good since coming back from injury anyway and i i, I still sort of think he's gonna get a rest um yeah, there's, like, nobody... I mean, it's, it's just Ponga. Like, there's other good... You could go a pod, but it's, like... <laughs> and, I mean, Ponga's only 15% owned. Like, he's he's not... He's not insanely... I mean, Tommy and Tedesco are way more heavily owned. Again, like, there might be a lot of players that aren't playing anymore that still own them. But going off the numbers, like, Ponga is still way more potish. And a lot of people don't have trades to bring him in for tommy who got injured so ponga is just the obvious trade in um we are going to be sitting with a bunch of cash in the bank but I, it doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't it honestly doesn't matter sure could we have used the money better during the season yeah okay we could have but uh you know it, it is what it is um it's fine so looking at before we do our final trade because they i that is the one exciting thing being able to hold two trades for this final round we have some exciting potential prospects to bring in and there's one guy i am very very keen on um that is not playing halfback i mean there's there's <laughs> it's it's gonna be a tough choice it's gonna be a tough choice don't you get me wrong but let's ha okay let's have a look at sit start so obviously ponga obviously young maju no we're probably trading Marju. Um, and then Crichton. And at the moment... So... See, this is where it gets a little bit... Tricky. Because if... If Laurie does come in at fullback... Obviously, I'm going to play Dane Laurie, right? So, obviously, Laurie comes in to my 17. But... I definitely want to trade Marju. Or trading sam walker i mean it's either sam walker or maju you could argue no nah, I, I was thinking maybe dummy half maybe a front rower but no like Payne Haas is now out for nor blake barnett they're gone the only real front row is tarpany yeah tarpany he he's been very solid but i'm not bringing tarpany now the dummy half i'm not gonna lie i i, I, I was half tempted by bringing in someone like a Harry Grant for this final round. But the problem is, I, I expect the Storm to fucking blow the Bronx away, right? And Tyron Wishart is on the bench. Now, surely, surely Bellamy gives Grant an early spell. I don't know. We'll see. There, there is still that temptation. And obviously, Robson, he's not playing the full 80 minutes as is, which is very fucking annoying. So... Yeah, we we could we could make make up some points there, but I still think it's either the halfback or the center wing. Um, but I guess in saying that, like if we brought in like a green for Robson, then we don't have to sit someone else. But yeah, I guess that depends on if Laurie uh, plays. So 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 so. Um, just looking at the okay, so the Knights. Oh, fuck, that's right. The plot... Well... Hmm. Oh, shit. What do I do? <laughs> so, okay, let's... I, let's have a look at halfbacks first. Because, I mean, I'm... I am still tempted by the halfbacks. Dude, I just... There's too many decisions. It's a blessing and a curse, right, having trades. Because, like, it's good. We're able to get in potentially a high-scoring player. But the curse is that now I've got, like, so many good decisions to make. The way this season's gone, like, it's... it's 
we're not going to make the right one. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> Let's have a look. Let's have a look. I mean, the obvious one is Hines, but I don't know. Up against Manly, I mean, Manly now without Tommy Trebojevic, it does make them. It, it does make them a lot weaker, but it's still a big game. Like I. I'm not expecting Hines to go massive. He could. Like, I, Hines is a guy that can go 150. But the biggest, I mean, the, the the big issue is that he's not goal kicking. Now, I maybe he goal kicks this game, but I don't, I don't think they're going to get him to goal kick. Like, if they weren't going to kick, uh, if he wasn't going to kick goals last week, is a week going to make the difference for him kicking this week i mean maybe but without goal kicking it definitely limits his upside without doubt and then on top of that brain trindle is you know it, he's so on the ball that Hines does suffer a bit from just not getting as many receipts really so i I don't know. I I think I'm going to I think I'm going to lean away against Hines. Like I don't mind it. I don't mind the the throw at the dartboard with Hines, but I just think there's better upside players to potentially go for in this final round. One of them in the halfback spot is Jerome Hughes. Jerome Hughes taking on the Bronx. It's 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 it could be a it could be a bloodbath against uh, my boys the Broncos, but again the Hughes slash Munster combo, it you know Hughes has still gone well at times, but it does limit him. It does sort of share the points around a lot more than when he was with uh, Tyron Wishart. Again, he's every chance to get an early shower. They got Wishart on the bench. Wishart could come on for Munster, Hughes, or Harry Grant. You never know. They could all get a spell, depending how the game's going. So, I, I still think I lean against Jerome Hughes at the moment. That's what I'm thinking. There's no other halfbacks I want. Obviously, Burn is out with a concussion, which, I mean, it's not good for him, but it's good in terms of a little bit of carnage for people that had Burden. He's pretty well owned, actually, so that's a good one. Um, I mean, you got Daily Cherry Evans, but nah, I mean, against the Shark, he's absolutely no shot. Um, I mean, Jer <laughs> Jerome Luai. <laughs> Jerome Luai against the Titans... It's very, very juicy, but, like, again, <laughs> like, is, is, I just find it hard to believe that Luai is going to play the full game against the fucking Titans, dude. Like, it's the final round of the season. I, I don't know. You don't know, like, it, it's just one of those things. It's, it's such a throw at the dartboard if, if a player is going to get a spell if it's a late resting. I don't think Luai's going to get rested. I didn't think it was going to happen with Cleary being out. I just didn't think it would happen. I mean, you never, maybe Laurie comes in for Luai instead of Edwards. Um, but because, like, the thing with Laurie, he is on the extended bench. So I do sort of see him coming into that side. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I can risk the Luai. I, I, I think he could go bonkers. But, again, Luai has to do a lot to score the points. He doesn't have the goal kicking. His base stats are obviously shocking. So, he has to get a lot of attack, which he could do. He could go he could go crazy against his Gold Coast side. But, uh, I think um, I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I, there's a couple others I prefer. So, at the moment, I'm a little bit off the halfback spot. I don't, there's some good options there, don't get me wrong, but I think I'm leaning more towards a center wing, I just, I don't know, I, I think the center wing have been genuinely or generally better upside consistently than the halfbacks and 5-8s this year, I, th I think that's obvious, and there's some really good targets, I mean, there's some, there's some good targets, so let's have a look. Obviously, I mean, Dane Gagai is a super pod. We can get anybody, obviously. Dane Gagai is a super pod. Getting rid of fucking Greg Marju for Gagai. I do think it's an upgrade for sure. They, they are, they're going right a lot more. Gagai, base stats out of control. 
I think it's a good matchup. He'll be up against Avarillo. Herbie's on the other side of the field, so I think Herbie's a good defender. Avarillo, he can be a little, you know, a little shaky at times. Um, actually, I was trying to think about. It. I, I think, I think Avarillo. They're both on. I know Gagai is on the right. Is is Herbie on the right as well? I think so. Or did he switch? Fuck, I gotta, I gotta try, I, I might just watch the last game, I'll just watch like a couple of seconds of the last Dolphins game to, to choose, because honestly, both of these guys, Herbie and Gagai, are like very, very exciting prospects, I actually, I think Gagai, if Gagai's up against Avarillo, is like very tempting, I probably, again, I think there's better, but if Herbie's up against Gagai, I actually think Herbie becomes like a really, really good play, just because Gagai... He, he misses some tackles, and I think Herbie could fucking run right against Gagai. Um, so I don't mind the Herbie play. Zachary Lomax up against the Canberra Raiders. Like, I... <laughs> I love fucking... Well, I hate Lomax this year because I literally haven't owned him, and he's averaged 80 all season. He's been... Has he been the highest averaging? Yeah, he has. He's been fucking unbelievable all season, Zach Lomax. So, yes, I I love the Lomax play. I think, yeah, I mean against Cam, I I mean Canberra. I don't know. What do you like? What do you make of Canberra? They've literally been fucking Penrith and then the Roosters. Their defense has been very very good, but now Elliot Whitehead's out. Jordan Rapin is out. I don't know if Fogarty's back. I I don't know. I like the Raiders. I don't, I don't know. Are they going to do three on the trot of like incredible defensive displays? They can capitulate pretty quickly, but fuck, I don't know. I think because I've, I think because I've, I haven't had Lomax this whole season. I think this is the, like, you might as well anti pot him for the final round, right? Like, is there really much point in bringing Lomax in at like a pretty high ownership? If he goes big, he goes big, but a lot of people have him already, so it's like, okay. But if you antipod him and he has a bit of an off night, Canberra turn up again, then you can make up some ground. Uh, I I don't know. I think I think just on moral, moral ground, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, I think because I haven't owned Lomax the whole year, I think we just got to ride him out and uh an anti-pot him for this final game it is the one thing i do like about bringing in lomax is that it'll give me somebody to watch in this fucking game because i've got i've got no raiders and no dragons players so it does make this matchup a little bit less interesting with uh with nobody so that is one thing to keep in mind um then we move down the list um Kyle Felt, no. Uh, Mulatalo is back, but again, he gets Manly. I don't love it. I wouldn't go him. Brian Toto. Oh, Brian, Brian Toto. Um, he's 600k. He's going to be really, really affordable next year to start with, honestly. I don't know what he... What he I feel like he started like 800,000 this year, so... I don't know. I mean, Toro, again, I feel like... Is Toro really not going to get a rest in this game? Like, I... Probably not. He's a winger, but... I don't... He's just not getting the tries. Like, it... <laughs> it could happen, but... I think, again, like the Lomax situation, like, he hasn't really hurt us. You could bring him in and all of a sudden get a massive score. He's not that highly owned, but... Oh, it's tempting. It's tempting. Bradman Best, also tempting. But he'll be... Again, we'll have to... I, I have to fucking look. I, I think he might up... I think he might be up against Herbie. Which is obviously not as good. I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, I don't like Avarillo. Dylan Lucas, I mean, playing in the back row. Very, very solid. Very, very good. Um, but... I don't know. I think you got to chase the upside. I mean, he's getting tries. He's getting like 80, 90 plus. But yeah, I don't know. Um, going down. Suwali. I did see Suwali obviously back. T 
tempting because he'll probably... I was trying to think, is he going to goal kick? I know, is Sandon Smith a bit of a goal kicker? Sua Lee is actually a pretty decent striker. Eh, I don't know. Even with the goal kicking early on, I don't think Sua Lee was actually, like, really killing it. So, yeah, I'd probably, again, I'd probably lean away against Sua Lee. Um, going down the list here, I know there's one more guy that I am very keen to... I mean, Mike is... Oh, Mike is Sivo. <laughs> oh... Micah, Micah, Sivo. Up against the West Tigers. I mean... <laughs> oh, Sivo. He could really fucking ruin your final round, or he could make it. He got a... I mean, that's, the thing that scares me is that he got 135 uh, last game, which is like... You know, is he going to back it up? I feel like he's actually been, like, pretty solid. Yeah, he's actually been, like, pretty good. He's been out, obviously, a lot with dropping, suspended, injury, I feel like. But, yeah, 74, 83. He got a 112 against South. 81. Backed it up. Then he got fucking 25 against Newcastle. Then, I don't know, did he get injured in this one? Probably 51 and 135. But, yeah, taking on the Tigers... It's, it's interesting. It is interesting. I don't know if I could do it, but I don't mind it. I mean, Paul Alamotti, I did... I, there's a couple more I really like. Paul Alamotti with the goal kicking. And if if the team stays like full strength, fucking Alamotti becomes like a, a, a genuine option, I think. Just with, yeah, the goal kicking and... He's a gun. Like, he's very, very good. He's got decent base. Uh, he's got that attacking upside. I don't mind the Alamotti play. Then, how cheap? How cheap is the guy? The only guy I was actually looking at, but then there's other guys that are popping up here. Um, Tunga getting 18 points. You'll love to see that. <laughs> um... Who else? Anyone else of, of note? I mean, there's one more guy. I didn't think he was this cheap. I actually thought he was a bit more expensive, if I'm being honest. And there he is right there. So Falongo. Uh, I guess he, yeah, he had a few games off the bench, which obviously dropped his par, uh, price. But, I mean... <sighs> playing fullback... Against the Bronx, the Storm are gonna want to put a number through this Bronx side. I just don't. I just don't. I, you know, I'm a Bronx fan, but I just don't see them fucking doing much, man. I, I'm very worried about this game. I don't see good things happening for my Broncos, and I just like I've got Eli Katoa, but to get another piece of the attack, like, I mean. Did he play... Wait, where was he? Oh, yeah, he played... Yeah, he played on the wing, didn't he? He played on the wing, and then Papenhausen was, like, gone, like, very early. So, he still... He scored 60. <sighs> Has he got the upside? Fuck, I don't know. Maybe not. That's the thing. Like, he's had some 80-minute games. 89, 90, 35... Yeah, oh, fuck, I don't know. Maybe not now. Oh. Honestly, looking at it, fuck, maybe I'll just bring in Lomax. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I, I honestly think I might just bring in Lomax. Um, I obviously, I won't make the decision yet. I, I'll have to fucking toss and turn about it. But, like, the thing with Lomax is that, like, it is a big factor. I've got nobody else in this game. Like, I'm... <laughs> I would like I would like to have somebody. It's a 3 p.m. game as well. Like I I, I like it. Um he's got the goal kicking. He's been kicking pretty well. And it just gives me somebody in the game to watch. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. Like that's the thing. Is it worth bringing Lomax? Oh, uh, is it worth bringing Falongo over Lomax? Like it it's 
ah, final, if Final Longer just had like a couple of tons in that 80, in the few 80 minute games, I'd be like more inclined. But the fact he hasn't, he hasn't quite shown that he's got that massive ceiling. It looks like he does, but I guess the base is really bad. Like he doesn't take many carries. The carries he takes, he's fucking really, really dangerous. But, you know, it does limit the the attack. It does limit the upside. He's also not a great ball player, so he doesn't get those easy try assists of a sweeping play that a lot of fullbacks do. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm honestly the more... Ugh, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm going to go low max. Just... just uh, Yeah, I think I think that's what I'm leaning towards at the moment, but that could change pretty quickly. So, if that happened, obviously uh, Lomax would be our fourth reserve, and then so let's just have Marju for now because obviously. But again, I could go a halfback. I could. Go, I don't know. Fuck. Do you go Nico Hines on, on it, dude? I'm. Um, this is torture. It's honestly torture. I really. I was really hoping for way more restings and. A lot more carnage because now like there's so many options there's so many good potential pickups i fucking i don't know i don't know it's it's a it's one again it's one of those things like it any of them could go massive any of them could have an off off game like it, it, there's no rhyme or reason obviously you can look at the figures and stuff and the stats but you know it's gonna be it's gonna come down to a cost of the cost of the coin a toss of the coin and uh i don't know i don't know at the moment but if we look now the only the only sort of uh thing that could throw us is obviously laurie if he gets a start i obviously play laurie who do i drop Obviously, you don't drop Ponga, not Young, and not Crichton. Um, not Eli Katoa. I, I don't think you drop. I like. I I know it's it's a tough matchup, but ah, fuck. I mean, you could you could drop Olakuatu, but surely he's due. <laughs> <laughs> Britain Nicara, maybe you drop Nicara against Manly. Mm. Maybe you drop Nicara. I don't know, dude. Like they just they just need one try and they're going eighty plus. Fuck. <laughs> then if we look at our centre wing, I mean, again the tough like Kira is playing at centre against the Cowboys. I probably I don't know. I I don't know, if he's not getting the ball like he did last week, then, yeah, you could drop Kiraz, but, I don't know, the Cowboys' defense is fucking atrocious. Like, I feel like Kiraz could could carve up. He'll be up against... Um... Fuck, who's the other center? <laughs> uh, Vilea. I'm pretty sure he'll be up against Vilea. I'd probably rather him against Holmes because Holmes has been shocking defensively. But uh, Holmes will be up against Crichton, I think. So, I mean, you you could drop Holmes, but uh, I, don't, I don't think you can drop Holmes. Kale Eero, maybe. And then Ruben Gary. Oh, fuck. They all play each other. <laughs> this is... This is going to be torturous. This is going to be legitimate fucking torture. Deciding who's a sit and a start. Like, Eero and Garrick play each other. Holmes and Kiraz play each other. And then... Um, fucking... I mean, even the back row. Like, Nika and Olakuatu play each other. Katoa and Kryn are, are must plays. Oh god. <laughs> this is this is fucking oh this is bad dude. This is bad stuff. Um yeah, I don't know. I've got to I've got to ponder. I got to ponder. I'll uh, I'll definitely be back for like a pre-lockout discussion. I'll uh, I'll answer any questions, probably probably very few questions coming into the final final round of the season but if you do have a conundrum put in the comment section i'll uh, i'll do my best to answer it we'll go through again i'll update on what i'm thinking after a day's ponder uh we'll talk about well we'll talk more about sit starts we'll talk about obviously the big fucking thing in vice captain captains because that is also a massive 
massive potential swing on who we go on that front. I. That's also going to be absolute torture. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be a fucking nightmare to decide who we're going to captain. Uh, but yeah, we'll do the rest of that in the final pre-lockout for the season. So hopefully you guys are enjoying the content. Make sure to like and comment. And I'll see you guys in the next one.